so good all the time. Amen. He's faithful. We've been uh, talking about prayer. Last week, you know, it was Easter, and so we talked about resurrection. Amen. Which is a good thing to talk about on Easter. It's a very good topic. So we're going to be continuing on with uh, prayer, and we're we're we've been really the 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 title of this is being you know pre preparing your future, but we're going to be talking about speaking God's code today, uh, because one of my one of the things I think is one of the most powerful things is praying in the spirit, praying in the spirit, and you know. Um, when you pray in the Spirit, you're speaking a language. You're speaking mysteries. You're praying out God's will into this earth. And I, I'll tell you, it's one of my most favorite ways of praying. Because when you don't really, um, when you, you don't have the words to speak, the Spirit of God can prompt you and you can speak in another language, a heavenly language, and you can actually pray out the mysteries of God. So it's, uh, it's really... Uh, uh, an incredible thing, and, and really what we're doing is we're co-laboring with God in prayer. It's Him and us coming together, flowing together. So we're going to be talking about praying in the Spirit today, speaking God's code. And, uh, you know, praying in the Spirit is perfect prayer. As we pray in the Spirit, we intercede according to the will of God, speaking out spiritual mysteries, and we give glory to God. God gets glorified as we do that. And so... We're going to be looking at some scriptures here. We're going to be getting a better understanding of what it's all about, speaking God's code. And so why don't we turn to Acts chapter 1. In verse 5 it says, for, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. That was Jesus speaking to the church. And in verse 8 it says, But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, and all Judea, and Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth, or the ends of the earth. And so, you know, it's all about God empowering His people, and He empowers us through the Spirit. He helps us to pray through the Spirit. Everything we do that, that is useful for the kingdom has to be flowing through the Spirit of God. He's the one who helps us. He's our comforter. He's, our, he's the one who helps us to pray through. He's the one who helps us to accomplish the great things that God has called us to accomplish. Amen. And so, you know, it's all about Him. It's all about God. Amen. It's not about us. But the thing that a lot of people don't realize is that God wants us to co-labor with Him. It's, you know, God doesn't do it all. Surprise, surprise. What it is is God works with people and it's God and us doing ministry together. Yes. God and us praying things out together. And so, um, you know, it's it's a lot better than us trying to do it on our own. If you try to, to, to do it on your own, you will get burned out. But when you lean on the Holy Spirit, when you trust in the Holy Spirit to help you, to empower you, He'll give you the strength that you need. Amen. He'll give you the wisdom that you need. And so... It's really important that we understand that. Now tongues, speaking in tongues, speaking in angelic language, it's the, the initial evidence of the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And so it's really important that we understand that because a lot of times people will go up for prayer and they'll leave without yielding to the Spirit of God and allowing the Spirit of God to pray through them. And they walk around thinking that they have something when the rest of their lives they'll never even flow in it. And it's about yielding. See, uh, the Spirit of God is, will not force you to, to, to pray in, in another language. You have to yield to the Spirit of God. Now, there are times when the, the, the service is like charged with the anointing, charged with the power and presence of God in a very tangible way. And that makes speaking in tongues easier as far as you... Uh, it's easier to yield to God under uh, um, an atmosphere like that. God manifests himself... And healings come easier. Uh, people, uh, the, the gifts of spirit manifest easier when there's a tangible presence of God in the place. Amen? Amen. Amen. That doesn't mean that God can't flow when, uh, when there's not this awe, you know, this great anointing. God can flow all the time. 
But we've got to learn how to yield to Him. And it's just easier to yield under that kind of a circumstance when, when the presence of God is just in a real tangible, um, I, I say just thick. Amen? Amen. Saucy. Yes. You know, when, when you've cooked uh, tomato sauce, you know, you boiled it or whatever you do with it, women. Um, well, you put it in a pan, put it on, on the stove, right? And, uh, you know, the longer it sits, the, the thicker it gets. Amen? Amen. And sometimes, you know, and I, I noticed today when we, were, when we were worshiping God, there was, you know, there, there was a tangible presence of God. It was yes. really good. Amen. You just want to soak in that. Amen. And that's what our, our soaking saturation services are about, is coming together, loving on God, and letting the anointing of God, the presence of God, just fill the place. <laughs> And then people begin to step out in their giftings. And I want to encourage you to do more of that. But praying in tongues will prepare you for saturation services. It'll, it'll prepare you to be ready. You'll learn how to yield. See, we need to learn how to yield in our private prayer times with God. And as we do, then it'll be easier to yield when we're ministering one to another as well. Because God, he, He's not on vacation. He, he is wanting to do work among his people. He wants to manifest himself in, in healing, in deliverance. He wants to manifest himself to people who are hurting and, and bring healing to them. And so, you know, as we learn how to yield to God in our own private times, then what happens is when it comes to public ministry, that the, we've already learned how to yield to him. Yes. And uh, yes. it, it becomes a lot easier. Amen. All right? So, so, why don't we look here in Acts chapter 2. We're going to be looking at, in Acts quite a bit today. In Acts chapter 2, starting in verse 1. This is the day of Pentecost. It says, When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them, divided tongues as a fire, and one sat on each of them, and they were all filled with the Spirit, Holy Spirit, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. See, they did the speaking. That's where a lot of people miss it. See, they spoke as the Spirit of God gave them utterance. It was, there was two people involved here. The Spirit of God, God Himself, and the people who were speaking. And there was such a strong anointing, it was just, there, there wasn't a case of having to yield. The, they did yield, of course, but it, it just, you know, when the power of God is that strong, it's easier to yield. Amen. Just, you know, they're loving on God. Next thing you know, there's a language flowing out. Amen. I love Amen. it. Amen. Uh, there's been times whenever I've been praying, and, and I'm, I'm praying in, in the Spirit, and it just flows out of me almost faster than I can pray it out. It flows out of me like uh, like you, like you hit a gusher, yes. you hit oil. It's just whoa, you know. And uh, it's that is very easy to pray when it's like that. If you ever had a moment or times like that, uh, you know you know what I'm talking about. And if you haven't, I want to encourage you to spend some time with the Lord. Get into worship. Allow Him to saturate the 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 atmosphere. And then begin to pray in the Spirit. And you'll see some great things happen. I just want to encourage you. You know, it's like grabbing a hold of God. And He's grabbing a hold of you. And you're doing it together. You're, you're praying it Amen. out. It's, it's incredible. Yes. And, and um, so they spoke as the Spirit of God gave the utterance. So God doesn't take your mouth and make you speak. Right. You have to do the speaking. Now, in Acts chapter 2, verse 11 through 13, it says, And, and the Cretans and, and the Arabs, and them speaking in their own tongues and the wonderful works of God, they were all amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, Whatever could this mean? Others mocked and said, They are full of new wine. So there, there, were, there was actually three responses that were given, when uh, three different responses by three different people, groups of people. Some of them were were just like they saw it as the wonderful works of God. Others were curious. They're like, what is this? 
And then there were others that actually mocked. And that's, that's the, the, the results that you'll get when you pray in the Spirit. Some people will say, wow, you know, God is in this place. It's the wonderful works of God. Others will, will say, wow, what is this strange language? Amen? And others will mock. So, you know, I, don't be afraid of the mocking. Amen? Praise God. Now, you know, in Ephesians 5, 18 and 19, it says, And do not be drunk with wine, in which it is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, making melody in your heart to the Lord. Melody in your heart to the Lord. You know, and there's times when, when you're praying in the Spirit, and, and a song will come out. And, and, and you'll get it in, in other tongues. And there's been times when I've been praying, and I actually get the interpretation of the song. And, uh, you know, it's it's a beautiful thing between you and God. It's, you know, uh, I, I really just, I love that. It's it's intimate. It's, it's such a powerful thing. Uh, I mean, I just don't understand how people can go their whole spiritual lives and, and only speak in tongues when they got baptized in the Holy Spirit. They, you know, I, I've spoken to people, and I'm like, have you ever prayed in tongues? Have you been filled with the Spirit? Oh, yeah, I did that 10, 15 years ago or whatever. But they've never, ever prayed in the Spirit since then. And that's not what it's all about. It's about allowing God to flow through you and to intercede for others through praying in other tongues. In Acts chapter 8, see, see one thing you got to realize is that that being baptized in the Holy Spirit and salvation are two different experiences. Some people they think, well, you know, uh, I got born again, and which is critical because you can't receive the Holy Spirit unless you are born again. And, and another thing I want to say is this: everyone who's born again has the Holy Spirit. Amen. But to be filled with the Spirit, that's when the Holy Spirit has you. Okay, you see what I mean? When you're anyone who's been born again has the Spirit of God on the inside of them. But when you get filled with the Spirit, then He begins to manifest more on the outside. Amen. Amen. And so, um, and that's what God wants. He wants His Spirit to come upon you. When the Spirit of God comes upon you, He's coming upon you for service. He's anointing you to minister to others. See, God doesn't just want to be a holy hitchhiker on the inside of you that you you carry through life. He doesn't want to do that. What he wants to do is he wants to, you know, um, manifest himself through you. Amen? Amen. I know I'm kidding. But, uh, but praise God. God is just, uh, he is so good. Amen. Now, in, in Acts chapter 8, starting in verse 14, it says, Now when the apostles who were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent them... Peter and John, he, they sent them them, who, when they had come down, they prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. See, they received the Word of God, and now that they, they, they sent them down so that they might actually receive the Holy Spirit. For as yet he had fallen upon none of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now, let me just say this. When... when when people get born again, they are, um, that's when they're baptized in the name of Jesus. So the, the, these people were already saved, yet the Holy Spirit had not fallen upon any of them. They're born again, they've been baptized in the name of Jesus, but yet the Holy Spirit had fallen upon none of them at that point. So it's a separate event. It doesn't have to be. You can be born again and filled with the Spirit all at the same time. If, if you're taught about that and you, you were taught to yield but a lot of times people get born again and they never experience that other part where the Holy Spirit is actually coming upon or falling upon them and so you know it's sort of like this um, if, if I have a glass of water in my hand I can pour water into the glass and fill that glass up but if I keep filling it up all of a sudden the water is no longer in the cup it begins to roll over and now it's on the cup too See, God doesn't just want the Holy Spirit to be in you. He wants the Holy Spirit to be upon you. He wants to endow you with power Amen. from on high. Amen. 
Amen. And so, you know, that's the point of the baptism in the Holy Spirit is for the Spirit of God to come upon you for service. Yes. Good. It's Amen. power. Amen. For power. Amen. Amen. Let's be powerful people for God. Yes. And it says here in verse 17, then they laid hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. So, so they received the Holy Spirit. And, and um, then, then Simon saw that through the laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Spirit was given. And then he offered them money. Well, you can't buy the Holy Spirit. Everything you receive from God is a, is a grace gift. Amen. So you can't buy Amen. anything from God. We can't earn anything from God. You can't be good enough for the baptism in the Holy Spirit. You can't buy it by your good deeds. God wants you to be holy, and you're not going to be holy without having the Holy Spirit. That's what His job is, is to make you holy. Amen? Amen. And so, you know, if you're trying to get all cleaned up without the help of the Holy Spirit, you're going to struggle. And, you know, it's, it's tough enough, even when we're filled with the Spirit, we still have to yield to Him. And so... You know, I can remember whenever I was baptized in the Holy Spirit. It was a, a long time ago. And um, it was whenever I was, I was a, a, a hospital corpsman. I was uh, a naval uh, medic. And what happened was that I was actually at Bethesda Naval Hospital in Maryland. And I was born again. And I loved God. But I was sort of an undercover Christian. I would read my Bible, and I can remember in, in one of the, the rooms, I would read my Bible, and I, this is me in the Navy, and, and all of a sudden, somebody would come, I would see someone come in the room, I would close my Bible real quick, stick it under my leg, you know, because I knew that I was going to get some trouble for it, you know, they were going to give me grief, and I met some other Christians, and started fellowshipping with other Christians, and it, while I was in the Navy, some people go to the Navy and they get worse. I went to the Navy, and I got better. Hallelujah. I actually got out of the Navy without a tattoo. Not that there's anything wrong with them completely, but, you know, why mark up the, the temple of the Holy Spirit, right? That's right. That's right. Amen. Uh, God loves you, even if you have a mark on you. But no sense in marking yourself all up. So, um, you know, <laughs> yeah, amen. So, so, you know, praise God. You know, God is so good. So, so I had a friend there, and he said, Brother, his name was um, Ramon Roy, and uh, he said, Brother, have you ever been baptized in the Holy Spirit? And I said to him, I go, oh, I've been baptized. I know what baptism is. I thought he was talking about water baptism. I had no, and he looked at me and goes, no, brother, you don't understand. You don't understand what I'm talking about. And I, I look at him like he has three heads. I'm like, what are you talking about, man? I never even heard of the baptism in the Holy Spirit. So he started sharing with me, and, and uh, there was a guy there, his name's Larry Garcia, and uh, he, he, uh, he was a weekend warrior. He came down for two weeks to, to um, work. He was uh, on res like reservist, and uh, he, he was sharing about the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And uh, I, I got a hold of a book on the baptism in the Holy Spirit, uh, Kenneth Hagin's book, and uh, I was kind of excited about it. I'm like, well, you know what? If, if that's for me, I want it. And I went up to, to one of the wards in Bethesda Naval Hospital. I got baptized in the Holy Spirit right there, Naval, um, Bethesda Naval Hospital. But, but I'll tell you, I had hands laid on me, and, man, I spoke in tongues. As soon as hands were laid on me, boom. It's just the power of God hit me. The Spirit of God was all over me. And I just, I was bleeding for it. I just yielded and, and it flowed through me. The, the tongues began to pour out of me. Amen. I had a friend who, who was there with me. And he was laid, hands were laid on him and nothing happened. And he was really disappointed. He was like, oh man, you know, you got filled with the Spirit. What happened to me? And, and so he was just disappointed. And I just encouraged him. I said, just yield to God. I said, go home, spend some time worshiping God, and, and watch what happens. He did that. He, he was praying and, and worshiping God. Next thing you know, the power of God hit him, and he began to speak in other tongues. Amen. And, and the power of God began to manifest. Amen. You know, it, it was just 
See, the power of the Spirit of God was manifesting on him. He just didn't yield to let him flow through him. Amen. And that's that's the, the biggest part of it, is learning how to yield. yield yielding yourself over. But I, I noticed something. When, when I got baptized in the Holy Spirit, I, some things started to change on the inside of me. All of a sudden, other gifts of the Holy Spirit began to manifest. And it was just incredible. It was like it was like the doorway into all the rest of the gifts. Amen. And I can remember I got bold about the things of the Spirit. I got bold about the Word of God. The Word of God began to jump off the page. I mean, it like became more alive to me. And, and um, it just, things began to manifest. Things began to...